Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Uh, we're going to be covering some IoT solutions uh, using IndieSoft Web Studio and the Arduino. Uh, we have Mr. Bill Mars, our very special guest today from Structural Coatings, and he's going to show you some of the things that he's done. Uh, gotten some good feedback this morning uh, on the webinar session, and uh, looking forward to presenting to you the rest of this stuff here. Before we get started, just some quick introductions. Uh, my name is Scott Cortier. I'm Senior Technical Sales with Indusoft, and um, after I do this brief introduction, I'm going to give you a, a little bit of an Indusoft overview, and many of you will know quite a bit about the product, uh, but what I'm going to do is not go over all of the product. Uh, I'm just going to kind of touch on the pieces that will complement what Bill is going to show you later in his presentation. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about Internet of Things. Uh, I have a, a few slides from a previous presentation that I've done that uh, kind of highlights and, and, and helps you understand what uh, Internet of Things and Industrial Internet of Things uh, means, uh, because I saw a recent study that about 85% of industrial automation, uh, 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 people in industrial automation still don't know what this whole Internet of Things is all about. Uh, so I'm going to bring that up and, and show you a little bit on that. Uh, and then I'll talk a bit about what, uh, oh, it would help if I could spell here. So let me correct this slide uh, while I'm doing that. So what is uh, Indusoft IoT View? So do a quick save on that. And uh, uh, show you about what IoT View is and then show you some quick uh, uh, additional resources where you can get more information on that. And then I'll hand it over to Bill. Uh, so, uh, let's see. So, again, some quick logistics. I can't hear you on this type of webinar. We can't hear you. Uh, so, if you have any questions, put those into the chat panel, the Q&A panel. Uh, Bill and I will try to get to those either during the presentation or at the end when there's a special section for questions and answers. Uh, all right. So, moving on. Uh, some, some features of Indusoft that are related to what Bill's going to talk to you about. So in addition to being a very powerful, uh, capable, complete HMI and SCADA system, uh, the, the fact of the, the scalability of this product or the portability, meaning you can develop in one environment and deploy on multiple types of, of operating systems. Um, if it's a what we call IndieSoft Web Studio full runtime, it'll be on a desktop operating system or a server type operating system. And I believe server 2016 uh, will be coming into this slot here uh, soon, if not already. And uh, then we have another license that we call Embedded View. Now that's when you run Indusoft on uh, one of the Windows embedded platforms, such as Windows Embedded Standard 7. Our CE View license is for Windows CE or what's now called Windows Embedded Compact Edition. And um, uh, IoT View is our Linux and VxWorks runtime. Uh, so uh, again, develop in one uh, uh, environment and deploy to any of these quite often uh, without making any changes whatsoever to your project or, or very little changes uh, to the project. So some other things that, that enter into this is, is what we call thin clients. We have three different types of thin clients uh, the first one that we developed years ago is called WebFin Client. Now, the WebFin Client must use Internet Explorer, and it's quite often used, let's say, for example, in an office environment uh, where maybe a production supervisor would go into their office, look at their desktop or laptop computer, open up Internet Explorer, point to a machine on the floor, and in Internet Explorer be able to view and interact with those screens, yes, with security, uh, and, and be able to, to see those screens just as they were, were happening out on the plant floor or the process or whatever you have going on uh, remotely. Then customers said, well, we don't want to view this in our office. We want actually a duplicate uh, HMI or many duplicate HMIs out on our process, or maybe we have a long machine. So we came up with something called Secure Viewer Thin Client. Now, that runs full screen. It, it does not have a browser window. In fact, in the training class, I often teach uh, attendees how they can programmatically tell the difference between a secure viewer thing client and the real runtime because just by looking at them, you really can't tell. Uh, then, a few years ago, we came up with what we call Studio Mobile Access, uh, SMA. 
And this SMA Thin client uses the HTML5 technology uh, to be able to get the screens, get the data, and then view and interact with those screens, again, with security in mind. But what's really neat about being HTML5 is, is that uh, this does not have to have an app installed. So you don't have to install an app on Android. You don't have to install an app for your iPad, for your iPhone, for your different uh, technologies. You just open up a standard browser, point to the screens, and uh, you can even go into kiosk mode if you wanted to and, and let it run full screen. So uh, very neat there to be able to see and, and uh, interact with your screens remotely. Um, and uh, you can actually um, have up to 128 of these thin clients of each of these thin clients simultaneously. Uh, and, you know, of course, that depends on the performance of your hardware, but uh, uh, the performance of this is, is pretty darn good. So uh, I wanted to point that out because some of the technologies that we're moving forward to is is the SMA thin client, and that'll become uh, important when we talk about the Internet of Things or the, the IoT view license. Um, <clears throat> this is um, looking at kind of the communications, and if, if you look at this diagram with Indusoft Web Studio at the core of this diagram, and we can you know use our over 240 drivers built in to talk to PLCs, temperature controllers, drives, things of that nature, uh, as well as OPC. We can be an OPC client to another third-party OPC server to get information in and out. Uh, we can get information in and out of web. Uh, uh, also, we can be an OPC server, so third-party OPC clients can come and get tag information. Uh, today, that is OPC DA, but uh, relatively soon here, we'll have an OPC UA server supported in the product, probably third quarter, fourth quarter, uh, uh, later this year. So that's that's coming. Uh, enterprise, uh, which is data, so really from any SQL database. And notice that all of these arrows are bi-directional, so you can get information in uh, or out via any of these methods. So you can share information, for example, from any PLC to a database or from one PLC to another brand of PLC lots of different uh, communications methodologies there. So uh, flipping into uh, what is the industrial Internet of Things, um, and uh, what I want to do is back up a, a half a step. And rather than talking about the industrial Internet of Things, I want to cover what is the Internet of Things uh, from a broader scope, non-industrial version. It, it's basically connecting things to uh, the internet and being able to then understand what's going on and and looking at things from a cloud architecture or remotely uh, and being able to do something extra that you weren't able to do with those things before. And we're already uh, connecting computing devices such as appliances and uh, other things, you know, smart watches, uh, collecting your your fitness tracking things, things of that nature. And one could argue that uh, even your your smartphone is an Internet of Things device. Uh, for example, as I mentioned, you know your your fitness tracking. You might you might have a, a, a fitness tracking app on your phone, and it sends it up to the cloud, and you get weekly summaries, and you can uh, uh, you know share those with your friends and family, and encourage each other, and things of that nature. And it's really um, uh, some simple, you know, events and signals of many different kinds. And, and when you think about this, this is very similar to what most of us know in the industrial automation space as machine-to-machine -machine communications or, or, you know, what many of you may have uh, uh, implemented as TCP IP communications or sharing information uh, from one machine to another as, as a product goes down an assembly line. It's not so different than that, but this is more about um, pushing things to a database or to a cloud uh, database and being able to understand what's going on in an industrial environment when we switch into talking about uh, the industrial Internet of Things. So, uh, again, I have a couple of commercial examples. This is not industrial Internet of Things. This is more just some broad scope uh, commercial examples. Here over on the right-hand corner is the Nest thermostat. 
you know, send your, your information up to your cloud account and be able to, to analyze that to, according to weather, weather patterns and other circumstances that may help make your uh, furnace or air conditioner more efficient. Um, uh, something over here on the left that I happen to be very fond of, it's called Swing Bite. I actually use this. I'm a, I'm a golfer. Uh, getting better all the time, at least that's what I tell myself. And this is one of the tools that I actually use on the driving range. It's this little motion sensor. Uh, it's about the size of my one of my fingers, and it, and it clips onto my uh, club. When I swing it, it does a 3D motion analysis of my swing. And right there on the driving range, I can uh, save this to my tablet, let's say, and uh, then when I get home, I can uh, uh, analyze my golf swing. Or even right there on the, the driving range, I can look and see, oh, that was a really good shot. What did I do? Or that was a really bad shot. What did I do? And, and try to correct and improve my swing. And it actually has improved my, uh, uh, my golf game uh, quite a bit. So uh, this is kind of neat because this, is, this diagram here shows you a 3D analysis of your actual swing and you can rotate around this almost like a 3d cad uh viewing so and then play it in, in real time so it's really kind of neat uh this other uh internet of things example down here is with a printer uh, many of you will have gotten the the message that pops up on your computer that says you're out of ink and uh, you'll you'll immediately hit okay or cancel and do nothing about that and then maybe it'll show up another time and uh you'll hit okay or cancel again and then uh, when you need your printer the most is, is when you will be out of ink and you haven't paid attention to that message. So what I want to point out is, is that's kind of exactly what the, the idea of the Internet of Things or the industrial Internet of Things is. And, and if we have this concept of uh, uh, an HMI or maybe it's, it's Indusoft running on an industrial PC communicating with PLCs, and storing data to either the cloud, a, a cloud-based uh, database, or it doesn't even have to be cloud-based. It could be uh, an in-house server, depending on your security and, and where you want to house your data. Uh, but when we're talking about IoT View, the, the license for Indusoft that lets you run on Linux or VxWorks, now instead of having that, uh, you still have this cloud-based or, or in-house server, but now with a wireless network, uh, a mesh network, different types of networks. Now these different devices, whether it's power monitoring, temperature monitoring, flow, valves, pumps, uh, in these embedded devices, uh, now you can embed a version of Indusoft uh, called IoT View and collect data and send it up to those uh, to the database in the cloud or again an in-house server. And give me an example of why that that might be used or why that might be neat is if you have, let's say, 100 pumps in your facility and they're all pumping the same material, the same viscosity, similar flow rates, and you've got one of the pumps, uh, one of the motors on the pumps that's drawing twice as much current as, as all the other pumps, well, because everything should be similar, you could probably say, hey, I, there's something wrong with this, and go fix it before there's a catastrophic failure, before a bearing burns out, before you, you stop a, a critical system, and, uh, you know, when it's convenient for you as opposed to when it's, uh, you know, when you're at your, your kid's soccer game or on the weekend and, and uh, when it's most inconvenient for you. So that's kind of the concept of, of this um, IoT View product, to be able to run it on these embedded devices and, and uh, uh, get the information right from these devices as opposed to going through uh, a traditional HMI or SCADA system, as I had shown here before. So... Um, Again, that's on, on Linux or VxWorks. Um, now I'm going to switch, switch this up a little bit here and kind of talk a little bit about what, what uh, Bill is going to show you. So here's another architecture. If you have Indusoft Web Studio running on, on uh, an industrial PC or a PC somewhere, communicating with PLCs, talking to a database, and now what, what Bill has done, he's, he's added these Arduino boards in, in different variations and I.O. on these Arduino boards and he's kind of using these, these Arduinos as uh, inexpensive remote I.O. And then through, uh, I, I have this wireless here, but in talking with uh, Bill earlier, I think he's going directly via USB 
and and or serial to uh, uh, his Indusoft system. But but regardless of the connection mechanism, uh, you get the idea is that that he's using these Arduino boards as kind of an inexpensive I/O architecture. Okay, so why do people want to do this industrial Internet of Things? So if you have these things out here, being able to collect data and send that up to the cloud into a database, well, then you have to analyze it. You have to, to put some effort into uh, analyzing that data and say, why is this one pump uh, drawing more current? And then understand that and make some decisions and, and act upon that. Uh, not like uh, when I showed you the, the printer ink example uh, where you just cancel and, and ignore it uh, you know if there's a if there's a pump drawing more current than the other ones uh, you should probably uh, go check that out uh, otherwise you will have a catastrophic problem I often look at this as more like a um, motion control feedback loop uh, in motion control if you know where you're going you also have to know where you're at to be able to get to where you're going and with that feedback, with that understanding of what's going on, to be able to correct problems and, and uh, uh, fix things as they're happening, you need to have that feedback. And this gives you that most efficient way of having that feedback. So what is IoT View? IoT View is, uh, is basically a version of Indusoft that, that will run on a non-Windows uh, environment, for example, Linux and VxWorks. And it still uses our same uh, what we call RACE or Rapid Application Configuration Environment, our development tools. So you can take those same development tools that you would to deploy Indusoft on a PC, on a computer, and run those on a Linux-based uh, computer. It has a very small footprint, meaning it takes up, uh, uh, it's light on resources as far as uh, CPU, horsepower, memory, things of that nature. And, and we've built in some really nice interoperability to, to have different protocols, OPC, talk to historians, databases, and all the while uh, uh, understanding that a lot of these embedded devices are not going to have local displays. So we're using that SMA thin client, that third type of thin client that I talked about, being able to display on smartphones and tablets via an HTML5 browser and view those screens remotely, if you even need to view screens. Maybe a, that, that thing is just off collecting data and, and sending data to the databases and you don't need uh, screens uh, to be able to do visualization. So some quick uh, uh, additional resources. You can always find more information up on our, uh, on our website. The data, uh, the data sheet has some really good information on it. Uh, uh, in addition to the standard Indusoft Web Studio data sheet, we also have a, an IoT view brochure talking specifically about running on non-Windows devices. So take a look at that. So you can find that up on the Indusoft website under the marketing uh, literature uh, navigation. And with that, uh, hopefully I haven't gone too fast. I'm going to hand things over to Bill. My name is Bill Mars, and I, I work for Structural Coatings here in uh, uh, Coalfield, or oh, actually we're in Clayton, North Carolina right now. Um, I've been in the automation industry since 1968. I've worked in chemical plants, oil refineries. I've done a lot of automation for uh, for automotive industry, the polyurethane foam industry, the die-cast aluminum zinc industry, the rolled steel tubing, and, and pharmaceuticals. Those are most of the industries that I've worked in before I got into the steel industry. Uh, we have three main businesses. We have structural coatings here in Clayton, North Carolina. We have uh, the structural coatings here in, in uh, Hertford, North, uh, Hertford, which is in Coalfield, North Carolina. We have structural steel products, and structural steel products is actually our our first business, and it's the uh, it's 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 the one that makes the most money. So structural steel products makes bridges. That's what this, this is our business right there. We we build bridges. Um, we these are some of the things that we make. Um, here is uh, an, a beam that's going for uh, an overpass. This is something we make here in in Clayton, North Carolina. We we make if any time you're going down the highway in North Carolina or South Carolina, Virginia, and you want to go underneath the bridge. And there, 
we probably did that. Uh, we've been doing this about 40 years, so. So our uh, our plant, this is our plant, and uh, the reason I, I bring that up because later on I'll explain some reason we talk about. This is a uh, painting facility. It's one of the largest east of the Mississippi. We can do uh, uh, things up to 140 feet long, and this is a fabrication for our bridges. This is and this is a steel in the steel yard. Uh, we open five years ago. We opened a new plant. I. And this is new core steel that's up in uh, uh, Hertford County, um, North Carolina. It's out. It's literally in the Dismal Swamp. It's uh, nobody wants a steel mill in their backyard, so they they put this up there about 40 years ago. Um, we our plant is right down the road. It's right here. I want to drag this over here, and it doesn't look anything like that. It's a lot bigger now. Um, all of this area has been paved and, and it's full of plate. Uh, and so, um, so this is located about two and a half hours from where I'm at, where I'm sitting right here. And uh, I use uh, something called um, vCenter. This is uh, VMware. And um, for example, I'm going to log into the uh, to the server here. This is the main server at the plant in in Coalfield. I'm connecting to our VPN. So so this is the SQL Server, the main SQL Server um, server, okay, and it's, uh, it's a monster. And we'll talk about that, why it's, it's so big. But Indusoft runs as a service. There's no viewer. It just runs as a service on the SQL Server box. So, um, So it's Indusoft is running and it's set up as a service. It's not running like you normally would run on a uh, on a on a box uh, as a uh, as a viewer. And uh, so the so we are saving data to the to the uh, to the history file area. And we also store store as part as the uh, um, as we store as part of the uh, database. So some of the stuff is saved as in the history, and as and some is saved in the uh, database. We also I also have uh, uh, another. This is a virtual uh, Windows Seven box that I use for programming. Uh, the PLCs, uh, and so this is this is uh, also located in um, Hertford. This is the Step Seven uh, Semantic Manager. Um, I can uh, I can like I can uh, go and go online. Uh, I can do all my program. I can do everything remotely, so I don't have to drive. Or be because there's nothing at the plant in that area of North Carolina, and so this you can see that this is real, and it's very responsive. Amazingly, uh, VMware works really good. I, I'm I'm really impressed uh, to be able to to do this uh, remotely. So that's that's how uh, we're doing. Uh, how this machine is uh, system is set up. So. On the production floor, uh, this is this is uh, Internet Explorer. I'm running an Explorer, an Explorer here, so I have um, uh, this is the application we're running. Um, I can't show you all the screens, but uh, I'm going to show you a couple. Um, one of the things um, that we have is in, an inventory problem. 
uh, because um, the steel plew, the steel mill will make a lot of steel of one kind at one time for a customer, and the customer doesn't have uh, the ability to store it. And so one of the things, um, this is an example of one of our yards. We got three yards like this, and, and if you look, there's just uh, this is steel plate that came out of the mill. Some of it's been processed, and some this here that's gray. It has a a um, zinc coating. It's a it's a it's zinc coating that chemically binds to the steel. So so the when the steel goes through the steel mill, it 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 goes through a, a water quench, and you get this uh, mill scale on the outside. You see this mill scale, and that that. That kind of protects it, um, and then the customer, most of the customers will leave it that way or we'll actually paint it for them, but they will store it here, um, and then they, we ship it to them just in time. Um, but we're, we take that, uh, the steel, we, um, we blast it, and then it's, and then it's coated, okay? And the thing is that every one of these pieces of steel has a serial number on it. And they do a chemical analysis of every one of these plates, um, and and that information is tied to that serial number. So when we come in, it's got a number on, and we blast that number off, and we have to track that plate through the process and make sure we put the right number back on it at the other end. Um, and then, so so not only we have to know track the 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 uh, serial number we actually add a lot of information to that um, so one of the, I, uh, one of the screens I did in Indusoft is this is a um, a call to the uh, query this is a query to the SQL Server um, and I do a query and ask for every location that actually has product on it so there's a so this location here if I click on that location then the, this query will show me the plates uh, that are physically located and the order uh, that they're stacked in the plant uh, or in the out in the uh, in the yards uh, so this the the operators or their the people on the floor can use this as a tool, they don't have. They can actually. They don't have to know SQL or anything, and it's actually you know, Indusoft is doing all this work where we're doing all the calls in scripts. Um, I have a another example here where I have this um, this query. Uh, this is pretty interesting. Where I go out and get the last plates processed. I get the uh, the query gets the last 50 plates that were processed. It sorts them by time, so it it gives me it's pretty impressive uh, to do a SQL um, to do a SQL query and get the top 50 plates. Uh, so I you know I know that you know there's the last plate that went off the uh, day at 3:22. So that's that's some of the things that we're doing with Indusoft. Um, we we store uh, when the plate goes is painted. It's it's actually heated. It goes through an oven. It's painted. It's heated, and and then we monitor the the temperature of the plate. Um, if the plate is it, it, the plate has to be warmer than the dew point. So the plate to stay. So we have to worry about the temperature of the plate and the the temperature in the plant and all this stuff. We I keep a trend back. Uh, normally I keep about a year on the server and all the other uh, I store. So I can tell you the plant the temperature in the plant uh, going back for five years uh, since we put the plant in. Um, those are the type of things we 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 we. Um, monitor like the motor amps on all the motors in the plant and we store that and that's and so we're I'm storing motor current on on every and I can select this allows me to select different motors uh, 
and I can go back in history, and I have about five years. What we found out is, as uh, bearings wear and things like that, you can actually see uh, failures before they happen by looking at some of these charts. Um, so, you know, that's some of the things that that we're doing with the Indusoft. The uh, well, the the data from the data from Indusoft is married. Uh, when when I talked about um, the trend, for example, Indusoft, it, when when this plate gets under the paint booth, it gets triggered. There's a trigger by the um, um, from the PLC, and the, it knows the uh, the PLC knows the serial number of this plate, and it tells Indusoft, and Indusoft goes and saves the you know the air humidity, the temperature, the plate temperature, all this stuff is saved uh, in the database for every individual plate as it's processed. And then there's like nine places through the process that we constantly saving um, diagnostic information. We know when it was planted, where it was, you know, everything about the system. Uh, is stored so we know um, because this these you know these go into aircraft carriers, navy ships. Um, they go into water towers. They go into bridges. Uh, they go into uh, barges. Uh, there's a lot of things that uh, where these are. They have to know this information. So the Indusoft is is critical for saving the information from the PLC into the SQL Server. And the SQL Server stores process uh, for pl for our for our product, but not uh, this time. That the the Indusoft uh, history historical is what saves a lot of the other information. Okay, so so that's what. So that's what we're doing uh, in our process. I don't know, is, is Scott, is there any any questions so far? Nothing popped up? Okay. Um, so in so our application, that, yes. Uh, I had both of my microphones muted. Um, let's see, there was one question here, pages. Uh, all right, so there's a question that's a, a little bit more Indusoft related. I'll, I'll get to that uh, uh, when you wrap up. Okay. So here's the, the Siemens. This is, we're, this is the Siemens, all Siemens plant. Um, we originally had one control logics in here, and we got rid of that, but um, the um, – there's a there's a reason we use uh, Indus. One of the reasons we use Indusoft. I mean, it's I just so much easier pre, uh, easier to program than WinCC. I've done WinCC applications in the past, and Windows uh, C, uh, Windows uh, CC flexible. Um, the uh, the cost of some of the other applications that you buy, uh, the competitive are just so much more than than Indusoft, and uh, the tech support I don't think is as good as what we get through from Austin. I mean, when I call tech support, I normally get somebody that's pretty knowledgeable. Uh, I haven't called them in a long time. Um, so the uh, there's you know that one was the cost. One is the fact that it has so much connectivity. It connects to everybody's uh, devices out there. And we originally were using it to uh, pass data from the control logics processor to a the, to the Siemens and back and forth. It was actually you being used as a gateway. That's one of the reasons we chose uh, Indusoft. And, uh, and the idea that we're using all as thin clients um, and it's running on the server. Uh, there's, so there's no lag between the calls to the – it's on the same box as the SQL Server. So it's really uh, very responsive. Um, it's just very fast. Um, so 
I, I guess that's some of the reasons uh, that we chose Indusoft in the in the first place. Um, one of the things I like about this. Uh, Okay, I saw. Uh, yeah, I'll get to that. So, um, so anyway, the, one of the things that you can do with Indusoft is that you can change. There's this thing called simultaneous request, and you can vary. It's like Scott. You want to explain this or not? Yeah, sure, Bill. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I hear you fine. <laughs> okay, sorry. I I have my headset muted and no. muted on the WebEx, and I got a I got a you caught me off guard. Um, so the way that I've uh, looked at this and implemented this before is is when you've got a lot of you know you've got a lot of communication worksheets going on here, and depending on um, uh, how you need to communicate and and uh, uh, kind of more like simultaneous nature. Uh, in the past, we had to implement multiple driver sheets to be able to kind of accomplish this. And now with this simultaneous request, uh, the analogy that I use is, is like if your PLC is a glass of, of water and you have one straw to drink through, well, you're only going to get as much information as that straw can handle, the bandwidth of that straw. And and by uh, like in your example that you have here, the maximum per station is three. That's like adding three simultaneous drinking straws to that glass of water. So it, it improves the performance. But you have to be careful that you can overdo it. Uh, if you are taking data out of the PLC faster than it can handle the communications, well, you might underrun the buffer on the PLC side lose communications and actually slow things down. So there's a kind of a sweet spot that you can, can figure out as to, to the best performance where you've improved the pipes uh, to be able to, to drink through, so to speak, but uh, you're not uh, uh, running the well dry. So hopefully that, that gives you a good analogy of that. I, um, I have multiple uh Indusoft licenses. I have a lab in my office. I have a complete setup of what we have on a production floor. I have three, uh, four Siemens PLCs sitting here, and a complete box, an i7 box running Indusoft, and and then I have another i7 uh, desktop. It's part of that network uh, that I that, and then I have some uh, other computers that I use as thin clients. So so. To, to test code before I put it into production um, and to do testing. And, and, and I use this uh, to, to test. I got from the manufacturers, I got a number of, 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 of PLCs, and I tested them. There was a big difference in different PLCs, what they could handle. I could literally crash PLCs and lock them up. This thing, I mean, if you turn that number up so much, you, you, you mean, it was interesting that using uh, Wireshark and some of the things that are out there that actually measure the amount of communications each one of these PLCs can do. And, and there was, you know, it was an amazing tool to, to test all these. And, and, the, and some of the manufacturers felt real bad when they, their equipment didn't hold up very well. But, but, um, Anyway, this is a this is a great tool, and this really solved a lot of my problems um, when I because um, I had so much data originally. So okay, so uh, I I think that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about um, um, the Indusoft my existing Indusoft, and I, and what we're going to do is talk a little bit about Arduino. Uh, okay, here's uh, some of the people on the, the suppliers. These are suppliers that are up on the uh, Internet. Uh, one of the companies you can use is SparkFun. Uh, they have uh, lots of tutorials. They're, they're a good source of education. Um, they, I mean, they have very many things. If you want to learn, uh, there's there's a lot of a lot of things there to learn about different uh, 
technologies. Um, the they um, they they sell a number of Arduino boards. And and so these some of the right some of the they have their own here. This is called the red board, uh, and that's some one of the boards that, that they sell. Um, that's their own because this is all open source. So nobody owns the technology, and so everybody can build their own boards. Uh, another supplier out there is uh, is Adafruit, and they have a learn section right here that has very many uh um and they teach you basic electronics there's there's things if somebody wants to learn uh there's a normal i mean an enormous amount of uh, information available um another source for um uh, boards is is the uh is uh amazon this is a chinese uh, version. I, I, these are the ones that I'm using. This is I bought them right here. Uh, these are about twelve dollars. Uh, the, the Mega is a lot different than some of the other. Uh, the Mega has four UARTs. It has a, a lot more um, processors. It has a lot of more processing capability. If you, uh, see if I click on this here, they have a. There's a buying guide here on SparkFun, and it shows you, you know, all these different versions. Uh, you're, and you get down to the Mega. Okay, here's the Mega. It's it's got uh, 54 digital inputs. It's got 16 analog. It's got four UARTs. Okay, I think that's analog. Yeah, and then and a 14 p.m. Uh, uh, pulse width modulation outputs that you can use to do pulse width uh, modulation. So, so this box, this this is twelve dollars. It's it's mind boggling to what you can get <clears throat> for twelve dollars. Um, and uh, so I, I started looking at this. Is because the process guys came to talk to me and and they wanted to do some some work, you know. They noticed that you know it cost us two hundred dollars approximately to add a, a temperature sensor to a Siemens PLC per point, and and you can buy these um, in there. Well, a lot of places they're two dollars, two and a half dollars for one. Uh, temperature sensor. This has a um, a chip in there that actually makes the measurement and converts that to uh, digital. It's that it has a built-in A to D and everything inside the. Um, so this chip right here, this is the DS16B20, is a temperature sensor, and uh, the probe has that built into it, and it uses either. SPI or uh, I2C, and, and I'll SPI is there here on Wikipedia. It's a it's basically a one-wire digital communications. I don't know if it, a lot of of uh, people in industrial don't know what SPI is, but that's a it's a one. Um, um, it's a one uh, wire. Basically, it has the digital. It does everything, and you can get multiple units on one wire. So you can daisy chain these, and and there's a number of devices and sensors you can buy that that work on the SPI. The the other one that is used. Is I2C is the uh, so these these devices oh
So I2C is another type of 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 a bus that uh, that you can buy a number of uh, sensors that and so these are the two that most of the Duinos and things like that use. Um, so um, if if you um, I mean, you can. Hey, Bill, if while, you... you're, while you're searching for that, I'm going to um, uh, bring up a question that one of the one of the attendees had, and I'm going to uh, paraphrase their question. And I'm actually going to add to it: is the Arduino platform and some of the sensors that you're looking at here? They're not necessarily industrial rated. Have you had any problems with implementing these types of of devices? Um. Not not yet. I have I haven't had a failure on any of my Arduino. Uh, Every one that I bought came worked right out of the box. Uh, I I haven't run them at you know on a production floor. Sometimes an electrical cabinet will get pretty warm, and we haven't run those yet. Now Siemens, and I know they have uh, they're starting to make devices that are. Uh, high temperature rated, and they're in the, uh, the they come in a plastic case and they run on 24 volts instead of 5 volts, and they're in the $200 range. So Siemens has a, a number of uh, the Europeans, uh, probably more than the United States, are 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 going behind this uh, IIoT. So the, the, those are they are selling uh, industrial quality devices. Um, and for for home learning, this is this is you know. So 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 if I if I want to, you know, I have a license. I have extra license. I don't have to affect my production line. So so the question, you know, what we wanted to do is is um, you know the process guy say, hey, we want to run some tests, and we want I need you know, 30 or 40 temp temperature sensors. And, and it's hard to go out and justify that much money uh, to my boss for something that's just going to run a temporary test. So, so I mean, this is what really got me interested in Arduino and say, you know, I could do this and save the, the, the company thousands of dollars or even be able to make a difference between not running the test and running the test. Um, so, right. And it also sounds like, other than temperature and maybe based on your geographical location, uh, you're not really using these in a harsh environment. Meaning, you're not washing them down. You're not. There's not a high shock, high vibration. So you're really not taxing these devices in, in, a, in an industrial environment. You're you're keeping them in a in a relatively clean environment where you're where, where you're putting them. Is that true? That's correct. And and, and some of the projects. Um, Some of it, like like this is something that that uh, okay we use uh, we have a number of these these are called a MyJack this is a portable crane if uh, if everybody can see that um, it's a it has rubber wheels and it's a crane right and and we use these in the plants uh, that out in the yard to move uh, things and and the first of all it's they're over a quarter million dollars a piece I mean the idea is okay let's say I put an Arduino on there and somebody starts that up on the weekends or at the middle of the night I want the Indusoft to send me an alarm, send text me, send let me know that I've got equipment moving around in the in the middle of the night. You know, so that's one of the things. The other thing is, if you look at the top of this, up here there's a there's a hook, there's a steel hook, okay, and when and when you lift when you lower this thing, the the crane has to be completely stopped, and if you if you try to drag, uh, what happens? You is you in you put um, small cracks in that hook, or that's right here where that. Uh, uh, so if if you have an operator that doesn't come to complete stop and drops the load, 
then then he then the, later on that hook is going to fail, and so those are the type of things that I would love to have uh, induce off saying, "Hey man, so and so driver just you know dropped his load when he was moving." Uh, I, I don't know. If it, so those are the type of things, and also we have a, a real problem with. Finding equipment. Since we, when I talked about being spread out, you saw that yard and all the buildings. Is where did our truck, our forklift? We have a number of forklifts. Where did they go? Where is this piece of equipment? Where is our pipe threader? Where is our uh, welders? And and so we're looking at using um, for identification. So so our maintenance doesn't spend two to three hours walking around the building because day shift left it somewhere or night shift left it somewhere and day shift can't find it. And if we can use Indusoft to instantly tell you, because that's what we want to do. We want it to go to their phone that, you know, so, so we have an app on Indusoft that the, the, the maintenance guys can pull up an app or pull up a web page and be able to locate equipment uh, in the yard. And, and he knows that so-and-so, it's on my pipe threaders in its so-and-so pl- uh, location or my forklift is the so-and-so location. And so, I mean, those are the type of applications that can can save us a, a lot of a lot of time. So, you know, that's that what really got us looking at Indusoft, I mean, uh, tying the Induino to the Indusoft. But as time had gone by, um, we saw other things. There, okay. So there's a, a product called a, the Arch Pro, and if you look at this, this uses the same shields. We we'll talk. We didn't talk about shields, but this uses the same shields. But this is a full blown. Um, ARM processor with Ethernet built, and so it's got two USB ports. It's got Ethernet, and it's a full-blown um, 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 ARM processor. So I mean, there's no reason you couldn't run Linux or run our. Uh, um, this is getting to the point where you could almost run uh, Android on some of these devices, and they're they're they have. Um, Analog inputs, they have digital inputs, they have, uh, four, this has four UARTs. I have one sitting here on my desk. Uh, and so this is the next generation beyond the Mega. I mean, so these things are getting to the point where it's so small, you can do, they, they, are, they replace computers. So, I mean, that's some of the things that, that, are, that are out there. Um, so the the question was um, originally I, I had a, a lot of difficulty getting um, Indusoft. I didn't know um, how to get Indusoft to talk to an Arduino. So I'm going to give you I'm going to save you hundreds of hours, at least 20 hours of work right here. Now, um, the, the 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 Arduino that I'm using, I'm using the uh, um, the Arduino. Um, uh, this is a Modbus slave driver, so I'm using the Arduino is the master, and. Uh, in, in, in the slave has to be uh, has a um, a has to have a a slave number. So in this page here on advanced settings, you need to set. I have it set for station two. Also increase the number of retries. So the the, um, the to get this uh, driver to work, you need to put a station number in there, and then. Uh, all you have to do, like here's the coil, the spreadsheet for it. So you doesn't need any kind of read trigger, no right trigger. Doesn't need the the driver from the Arduino triggers this. Uh, so I can change the coils or 
the registers. If you're familiar with uh, Square D uh, and, and understand Modbus, then you understand that uh, you know I can uh, read and write these devices um, with this Mod SL driver. Okay, so so that we're and we're going to put this. Uh, uh, on the web, uh, Indusoft web station. I've just showed it, save you a little bit of time in case you want to do this. Um, the, the Arduino, this is our Arduino platform. I don't know if, uh, how many people have used the platform. Um, I have uh, my Arduino hooked to this computer, and uh, this button here says serial monitor. It actually allows me to. Um, Print. So I, there's print statements in my application, and it's printing. And and what I am um, what I'm doing in the program, I I, I have two. Uh, this has four UART, so I'm using two. One here, serial is is serial uh, UART zero, and serial one is UART number one. I'm setting uh, serial. Uh, the port zero to to 9600 baud. That's this this application that's running on the window. And then you have the 9200 I'm using is on the uh, the second serial port that's on the the Arduino uh, Mega. And uh, and I'm calling and I give it a, a right here. This number right here is the uh, slave ID that has to match the, the program it's in Indusoft. And so I, I, it, this is just a test program that I come up with. And and here uh, I'm writing, I've, these are all commented out, but right here I'm writing uh, a, uh, a single coil, that's a right single coil, uh, and I give it a value. Um, and here I am writing registers as examples of writing all these individual registers with a dummy value, and then this is a it's this example of how to read the registers that's in a. Uh, so this this basically uh, allows me to write to. Uh, uh, so the purpose of this was, you know, originally we want you know the the process guys uh, and they wanted to do um, some testing and they wanted a bunch of temperature sensors. So, you know, the, the idea for this is, is hook up uh, lots of temperature sensors to the Arduino and use uh, Indusoft to do my data logging and, and trending. I'm, I mean, using uh, to save um, and when you save the uh, in the tra back over here under tasks, there's a thing called trend. And this one has have, but you put up a sheet there, and you can save to the local history file, um, and and then I can I, then you can actually ex export. Or you can do anything you want with it. But you know that was the the original idea was to use. Um, uh, the Indusoft to for data logging and and doing trends, uh, that type of thing. Um, since then, we actually looked at a lot of applications. Um, this is a 900 megahertz uh, transceiver module, and we have some applications to read and write 900 megahertz. Um, these are modules. I noticed that I didn't change my calendar. I still have March calendar. Their first day of spring. That was last month. <clears throat> so these are uh, converts TTL to RS232. This one, yeah, I have one that does 485 also. And this is a hey, wireless. Can you go back to that? Can you go back to that previous picture? Yes. First of all, I like that your calendar to the left of the date of the 13th, it says time begins. I, oh. I want to know where you get your calendar. Um, <laughs> so, sorry, well, that, uh, that... We're, we're starting to run a little bit over time, so I'd okay. like, uh, if we could uh, uh, get you maybe to answer a couple of questions that have come in. Um, one of the questions was, uh, you know, since since you've been doing this kind of thing for so long, 
what uh, what have you seen kind of come and go technology wise and improvements and what and what do you think is going to be here in the upcoming you know the, maybe the, the 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 next five or ten years what do you what do you think is going to happen? Oh, um, that's a good question. Um, manufacturing, I mean, it used to be there was used to be lots of jobs in in manufacturing, so. In that sense, the number of, of of jobs in manufacturing has gone down. I mean, and we have a plant. You saw that plant that we have. I, it only takes one person to read that plant. One person can run the plant. Uh, there's one person in the control room, and there's down on the floor. There's one quality. Now I have eight people on each end of the building handling the doing the logistics of moving material, but the, the actual running the plant takes one person. So. I mean, that's one of the sent chance, uh, things that you've, I've seen over the years. Um, when I first started, my first computer was a control uh, control dated 8500 mini computer. That's the first one I that was like in the early 70s. 2K of memory cost $74,000. So one of the trends is that every piece of hardware is going to get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. I mean. When you, I mean, you're, you know, I'm in this picture here, this is a, this is the, um, a, a, uh, this is a Wi-Fi unit that plugs on Arduino. This is a 433 megahertz receiver. So I can, this is what they want it to be able to receive uh, um, from the weather station. I can save and it's, and this, you know, this is an example of the the red board. What you know here is an early unit, right? So, if this is a converter that converts USB to TTL, right? This board is fifteen dollars. Okay, that's I mean, the the technology here is you got a mega. This mega is twelve dollars, and it has built-in USB. It has, I mean, it's so much more powerful than. Even something that may this was this is here is in uh, almost thirty dollars what you see here, uh, and and it's nothing compared to something that came out a year later, in which you got something that's four times more powerful, and it's half the price. So I mean that's that's one of the things that you see. Um, I, I think that the yeah. go ahead. Uh, I just was going to jump to another question that we had come in. It was, um, why why do you use uh, uh, the the slave the Modbus slave as opposed to master? And and I think I can answer that. And let me know if you if you think otherwise. But your Arduino board is actually acting as the master, and and in this case you have Indusoft acting as the slave. Okay. Well, this is part of the learning curve. I've only got, you know, so many hours. I got my regular job and stuff to do. <clears throat> but um, so the first thing I did was I took the Arduino and I dumped ASCII data and I used the Indusoft. So I used just the TXRX and I was this, I was shooting ASCII data to Indusoft and then I used, um, then I used, um, um, the VB scripting in to to take and strip the ASCII data that was coming in. I take it and convert. I can convert. Uh, so you in VB scripting, you convert uh, the string to a number and all the things like that. And I was so so that was my first uh, project. And the second one is is doing this Modbus slave. I want to be able to do DF1. So. Uh, um, so my next project is to make um, uh, the, this um, Arduino to to look like an Allen Bradley processor and to do DF1 communications. And then my next, uh, the other one that I wanted to be able to do is is start doing TCP/IP. And and once you do that, then uh, the really the the Arduino can be the slave, and and um, the Indusoft can be the master. So I think yeah, you know. I, I would uh, 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 also suggest Modbus TCP because I know when I started playing with the Raspberry Pi, I found so many resources online, and I 
I literally copied a script, installed it, and had it running on my Raspberry Pi, and, and it was communicating Modbus TCP in about 15 minutes. It was unbelievable but, uh, how much resources were out there. Well, the, 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 the Ethernet boards for these actually cost more than the process. I mean, some of these Ethernet boards are $75, so, so the, oh, the wow. problem okay. is getting – a reasonable Ethernet. That's why I was looking at that one that was it's Seed Arch Pro. It has Ethernet built into it, and it's it's like thirty five dollars. So, um, so that's that's the 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 Ethernet is the problem. It's it not it's not. I, mean, I can get Wi Fi a lot cheaper than I can get Ethernet. So, oh wow. Um, and Bluetooth is another thing. They're they're doing a lot of Bluetooth. So, so yeah. the. The market is changing so fast. Um, yeah, I, it's I can buy stuff faster and I can get them to work. You know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, so, Bill, can I can I have you jump because uh, we're a little bit over here yes. jump toward the end uh, and, and oh. make sure we show your contact information there. Yes. Okay, there's our contact, and that's uh, the website for our company. Um, the phone number for the corporate headquarters is 919-553-3034. I don't know if anybody's in the market uh, to buy a bridge, but we'll sell you a bridge. Um, that's you know, right. So. <laughs> uh, so I'd just like to remind everybody that uh, we have it open for questions. I know we've run a little bit long, but uh, I think Bill showed us some really interesting uses of some technologies that are out there. Uh, uh, Bill, I'd, I'd like to thank you for showing us this. This is, this is uh, as we talked offline, I've, you know, I've got some home automation stuff, and, and, and this stuff really interests me. Uh, from an industrial environment, uh, all the, the low-cost things you can implement, especially on a temporary uh, time frame, that, that's really, really, really neat. Um, we've had a lot of comments and, and compliments come in on the presentation so far. A few questions that I've answered privately offline uh, that were kind of a little bit more detailed than, than what we would uh, uh, bring up during this webinar. So again, if you have any questions, uh, put those into the chat panel or the Q&A panel. Uh, right now, I think we've answered everything that has come in. Uh, and again, as, as uh, Bill has mentioned, if you, if you need to buy a bridge or have some uh, metal processed, uh, uh, you know, buy some steel plate, take a look at these guys, take a look at their websites. Um, and uh, currently, I don't see any new questions coming in uh, with that. Bill, I would uh, really like to thank you for putting this on. Some great information. Uh, we've had uh, lots of feedback on on the, the questions and answers, and uh, uh, you know, just people that really enjoyed what what put on today. Let's see. I don't think I see any. I'm going back up through the list here. Uh, interested in definitely what what Bill's doing. All right. Uh, I don't see any new questions in. Uh, with that, Bill, I would so much like to thank you uh, for doing this, taking the time. You know, we've done this a, a couple of times today. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody who joined us. It uh, looks like we had a really good turnout uh, for this afternoon session. Um, some people that I know and, and uh, know personally I've worked with, thank you for joining us. Uh, Bill, anything last minute to add? Well, I, I don't plan to stop. So as, as I get more things, I'd like to. I don't have a problem sharing what I do here and uh, what I figure out because you know, I think it would just help everybody if we if we share information. I wish there was a maybe some forum on. Maybe we need to get a forum on on Indusoft uh, forums just to be able to share. Uh, maybe work together. I think uh, there's well, a lot of things that we can what. do. There's a there is a forum up on the Indusoft website. Uh, feel free to uh, uh, you know start maybe kind of a general section going on or tips and tricks and uh, uh, feel free to start adding that. And if we if we see that that takes off, we'll we'll maybe we'll add a whole new section for that. Um, I would like to remind everybody that uh, what Bill's offered to do is he's going to send some of his source code that he has that he says he's going to save you lots and lots of time. 
And when we post the recording of this webinar up on the website, we're going to also include uh, the slideshow as well as uh, Bill's uh, source code up there. He's going to offer that up for, for everybody online today, and uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and post that up on, on the, the site. So, uh, Bill, anything else to add? No. Just thank everybody for coming. Thanks, everybody. Uh, uh, really appreciate uh, everybody's time. With that, we're going to go ahead and, and end the webinar this afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to fill out that survey. Let us know if you'd like to co-host a webinar with us. Let us know how we did today and uh, if there's any other topics that you'd like to see in the future. With that, uh, everybody have a great day, great evening, great morning, depending on where you're at. And uh, we'll talk to you later. See you on the next one.